Welcome to the Grace Slice Podcast. I'm Eve Stipes, and today I'm sitting down with Ruth Jo Simons to chat over some coffee about another everyday habit for spiritual growth. So let me ask you, do you have a hard time being alone? Have a hard time not having background music on or kind of white noise in the background when you work? Are you always trying to fill the silent gaps in conversation? Are you tempted to scroll your phone while you wait in lines or even at a stoplight? If any of those describe you, you are not alone, friend. Join Ruth and me today as we talk about what's worthy of our full attention and why our full attention is so much better than being distracted. Let's get to it. Before we start our conversation, today's episode is brought to you in partnership with Nav Press, publisher of Donald Whitney's practical book, Spiritual Disciplines for the Christian Life. In it, he addresses questions like, what are spiritual disciplines and why should they be practiced? And can't we just coast into the promise of Christ's likeness and forget about discipline? This book uses scripture to help us see the value of holiness and shows us how to integrate spiritual disciplines into our daily lives. Regardless of where you are in your Christian walk, Spiritual Disciplines for the Christian Life provides refreshing and profound encouragement for your spirit. We know it did for ours. Visit navpress.org slash spiritual disciplines to learn more. Now let's get started on today's conversation. So today we're talking about the discipline of silence and solitude, Oh, which if you're like me, might sound a little intimidating, especially because we're coming out of the strangest season, a global pandemic. Um, We were all alone and isolated. So many of us found ourselves um, distanced from our communities, from other people. Um, Single folks were in apartments by themselves for so long. So just to be clear, that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about isolation or distance from people or doing life alone. We're talking about silence and solitude and why this habit, this this rhythm is good for our spiritual growth. Well, what do you think? What is your gut reaction, Eve, to this topic today? So... I don't know about anybody else, but my honest gut reaction to this topic is like, yes, I need more (laughs) of this in my life. (laughs) As you hide yourself in the bathroom from your kids. Yeah, yeah. which may be a part of my season of life and may just be kind of part of my introverted nature. Um, But yeah, like silence and solitude does not feel all that intimidating to me. It feels very um, comforting and restful. What about you? What is your Yeah, well, reaction? I always say that I feel like I was such an extra, extrovert when I was younger, and I don't know if it's because I live with seven males now, but I really, really enjoy alone time. But I will say, when you started talking intro here today, I felt a little... Oh, felt a little called out, right? Because I am that person who is standing at the airport trying to get stuff done, even if, though I'm alone, I'm listening to a podcast or I'm trying to respond to voice messages. I'm, I'm just mm. always doing something, even if I'm alone. And so really is about, I mean, the topic today is really about why it's not just being alone, but having a priority placed on some silence and intentional aloneness, right? Yeah. So that's a great question. Like there's a difference between being quiet and alone, like locking myself in the bathroom to catch a quick break um, for my children, or maybe someone (laughs) taking an extended little break to get away from work for a minute and just kind of like Mm -hmm. chill out. There's a difference between that and between a spiritual habit or Mm -hmm. um, discipline of silence and solitude. So what, what do we mean by the kind of spiritual habit of silence and solitude? What does silence mean? What does solitude mean? Mm, Well, I think about silence as putting away all the distractions, um, the reading, the praying, the journaling, the meditating on scripture. Like those are all good things. I mean, there's so many, it's a good thing when I reply to emails. It's a good thing when I'm listening to a message or get on Voxer and try to like communicate things that I need to talk about with others. And I could be alone in doing those things, but I'm not being silent. I am still distracted. I'm still involved in lot. My brain is still going. Um, 
And I think, you know, we really do believe that community is necessary. And that's, I mean, we're going to have another episode about community at some point, but just as important is learning that um, we're not only communal people, but that God created us for himself. And so there's something important about the silence and the solitude of being able to actually turn our attention to God instead of the things that fill in the blank spaces in our lives. And so um, I don't think this is really about us saying, are you an introvert or an extrovert? Are you a doer or are you um, a rester? I don't think it's really about resting or doing as much as it's about saying, are you intentionally engaging your life in a way where you are purposefully including time where you remove yourself and cease all the activities that would busy your mind and busy your hands and turn your attention to what is worthy and someone who is worthy Christ alone, right? Yeah. I feel like the biggest difference for me between those two things, like quiet alone versus silence and solitude is what is my end goal? Like, am I trying to relax? Am I trying to just kind of like get away, get a little me time, which is totally appropriate at times, like a a very necessary part to like caring for your soul and your life and all the things. But is that my goal just to relax or is my goal godliness? Is it being made more like Christ? Is it knowing him better? So I think that's how I can distinguish in my own life. Like, am I just seeking peace and quiet (laughs) or am I really trying to like engage my heart and turn my full attention um, without distraction to the Lord. Yeah. It's a difference between, like you said, relaxation or formation. Yeah. Because relaxation is absolutely great, but formation is something where you intend that the end result may not be immediate, but it's something where your choice in doing something, which is what this whole season is about. This whole season is about this word disciplines that sometimes might feel a little intimidating, but we could call it habits or rhythms, but something we intentionally do so that we say, Lord, I'm going to just incorporate this in my life. I'm going to try to keep on doing it, be consistent in it, because I believe that you will form me in the practicing of this discipline. Yeah, that's a really wonderful way to put it. So what's the biblical basis or example for these things as a spiritual discipline of habit or habit? Yeah. um, So I think we can start with the example of Jesus himself, right? In the gospels, we regularly see him step away from ministry tasks that are clearly important. Like several times. Yeah. Yeah. He's healing people. He's preaching. He's engaging. He's talking to his disciples. And yet he takes time to like step away um, and be alone. Um, So there's a, a verse in Mark chapter one, Verse 35, it says, rising very early in the morning while it was still dark, he, being Jesus, departed and went to a desolate place and there he prayed. And we see it again in Luke chapter 4. When it was day, he departed and went to a desolate place and the people sought him and came to him and would have kept him from leaving them. So Jesus is doing super important tasks. He's doing the Mm -hmm. like literal kingdom work. Work of the Father. Yeah. Yeah, like God has called him to do and... He is here doing it. And yet he steps away to pray often, um, finds a quiet place, a desolate place. is doesn't sound bustling to me. You know, like it's quiet. It's away from. It's not entertaining. People. It's right. not like he's going to find some other thing that will give him, you know, a little energy. Sustenance a little, yeah. or, yeah. Right. Yeah. So I think that's the example that we have to follow, right? So silence and solitude isn't me going to watch Netflix in a hotel room by myself, even mm-hmm. as delightful as that sounds sometimes. And please um, do that, right? Yeah. I mean, that, we're just not talking about that yes. kind of rest right now. Yes. Yeah. Um, this is for the purpose of formation, just like you said. Yeah. And I think that I hadn't really noticed this before this particular conversation, Eve, but this is what happens when we're really concentrating on a particular topic and then look at the scriptures. But I don't think I really realized and thought through that um, the gospel writers made it clear that he didn't just go and depart from the crowd and go to a desolate place, but he wanted to truly meet with his father. Like it was, it was formational because he went away so that he would not be distracted by ministry, but to be formed and to be renewed in, in, 
God alone. And I, I think that's convicting for me, but I'll just say, like, I mean, I'm just, I'm just on, you know, this episode, just convicted and <laughs> saying, gosh, that alone time, I spend a lot of time alone, but I don't necessarily spend a lot of time alone asking the Lord to form me intentionally saying, I need you, not these other things. Sometimes I turn to alone time thinking, I need a moment to rest. I need to not answer people's questions. I need to not work, but it may not be formational in saying, I choose silence and solitude because I want to turn my attention to you, God. I want to actually think on, um, like what we talked about in the last episode of, um, the, the, how formational it is to meditate on the word of God when that becomes part of your habit. And so that's why we titled this episode worthy of your attention. Um, Jesus's example points to something or rather someone being worthy of full attention that he needed to remove himself, even of the good work he was doing, the fruitful work he was doing. He could have stayed at that work and probably even done more in spreading the gospel and sharing his the work of the father, he could have stayed at it and been like, but look how fruitful it was for me to keep on going. But instead he said, Hey, God is worthy of my attention. My father me deserves my full attention. I need to remove myself from even the good work to apply myself fully in silence and solitude before him. Yeah. And that, that formational time really ends up being the fuel for the ministry that he does then, right? Yeah. Like there's a, um, a real connection between the time we spend alone and what we do in that time alone and what we're able to do then when we're back in community. Like, yeah, that's good. We can't do one really well without the other in the spiritual disciplines book that we have, um, been working through and we've referenced a couple of times. Donald Whitney has this great quote. He says, what we are when we are alone is what we really are. If we habitually seek God and his perspective through his word when we're alone, not just at church or when with other Christians, then we may be hopeful that we do know God. And I just think, man, wow. Ew, like what we are <laughs> when we're alone is what we really are. And that fuels everything else we do. Like yeah. if we can't be quiet and still and alone with the Lord and give him our full attention, mm -hmm then what hope do we have to be effective for the long term with other people? I mean, we can, we can make it till we break it, you know, but, but not for the long haul. I think what is exposed and revealed when we're alone is really telling, right? I mean, we can as simply, simply put the, the pandemic of 2020 carried into 2021 revealed a lot about each of us, right? We saw where we look for worth and happiness and distraction when bars close down and we can't travel or when kids can't go to school for the day and families are stuck in the same house together. No one's saying that those were ideal circumstances and we should have all been feeling great, but that sometimes it exposes the areas in which we're covering up with more distractions, more things that will just soothe and put a balm over it, a little Band-Aid over what really is hard. And so I think Donald Whitney's point there is so good, is so memorable that what we do when we're alone is really who we are because it either puts on display when we're alone in silence, when we don't have things playing and going and there's not a lot going on, it really exposes where we turn to and what mm -hmm. we really think is truly satisfying. Right. Yeah. And it's like, we may not realize how restless we are mm. until we're kind of forced into, or, or we choose to, to try and practice this discipline or this habit of like silence, solitude, yeah. All of a sudden it is, it's going to expose like, wait, I feel really restless or like, where's my phone or what's, mm -hmm. why does this feel so strange? Like pausing and stopping and recognizing, A, I feel restless and B, the only way that that's going to be like actually comforted or soothed is in Christ and in his presence. We may not ever get to that point if we don't stop and put away yeah. the distractions. So let's get real practical here because I think what the part that feels confusing and maybe intimidating about all the spiritual disciplines, right? All of those things 
it's always that feeling of like, well, how do I do it without it hurting too much (laughs) or without it costing too much? Or because the idea of the word discipline basically means that it's going to kind of be costly and kind of hurt. It wouldn't be a discipline otherwise. It would just be called human nature. Fun. (laughs) It would just be called fun. I don't think we would... (laughs) <laughs> the spiritual <Okay>. funds. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a whole episode, a whole uh, season on spiritual fun. I mean, really, <laughs> it it all results in true joy. Yes, a true longing of our hearts. But it's called a spiritual discipline because by birth, by nature, our bodies and our minds and our souls want to go a direction that we lead that yep. is kind of not surrendered to God, does not submit to God's ways, and really left up to ourselves, our t- whole trajectory in life would be work, work harder, work faster, never stop, earn your way, um, mm-hmm. squash people along the way as long <laughs> as you come out on top. And that's yeah. not just for overachievers. That's just our human nature is like, yeah. I want to be seen, known, and loved, which is not a bad thing to want those mm-hmm. things. We're made to want those things, but we think that the only way to be seen, known, and loved is if we go do it our way. Mm -hmm. And so it's a discipline because it's us realigning our lives. All the episodes of the season are for us to say, how do I incorporate the spiritual discipline? So I realign myself with what is true. And this week we're talking about what is true. Can't always, like we literally can't even find awareness for what is truly satisfying until we stop and yeah. cut out some of those other distractions. So let's get practical because I, and I'm going to, I'm not going to answer this. I'm going to put it back on you. So oh, great. Um, enjoy. Thanks for that. Enjoy. But my question is Eve. So is this something we can, can accomplish in, you know, 60 seconds? Is it enough to be silent and so, have silence and solitude for 60 seconds? Or do we not really understand the true effects of this until we take out the kind of time that feels a little more costly, like 60 minutes? Or Mm -hmm. do we go away like, like Jesus did on his 40 day journey in Matthew four, right? Where Mm -hmm. he's like, goes away literally out into the wilderness by himself and is ultimately tempted. Um, and he's fasting and he's tempted by Satan and like, what is this? And like, what does it look like? How do we start in the everyday, I'm asking lots of questions to buy you a little time. <laughs> so you, you can think about it because this is hard. And I don't think you and I, there is no formula for this, no. but let's talk about like, what does it mean to practically, and how, maybe you and I would say different things about mm-hmm. how we could implement this in our lives, but what are the ways in which this spiritual discipline could not feel like a duty, but be something we approach with joy and say, I'm going to yeah. build up to, like, it may not be easy at first, but I'm going to grow into this spiritual discipline because I know that I need to have silence and solitude with the Lord. Yeah. Well, I think, I think it's a lot of those things in combination. So I think that it can be 60 seconds and I think it could be two days, you know, Mm -hmm. like there's a a range and they serve different purposes, I think. So in the, in the, yeah, in the Whitney book, he talks about minute retreats. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking like, that sounds so weird. But the more I've tried it, the better I feel about them. So like mm-hmm. literally, it's kind of that thing where you're waiting in line for something. You're waiting at the doctor's office. You're waiting at the drive through And you have time that you could kind of spend with whatever. But to like turn the radio off and really just for mm-hmm. that moment of time yeah, so to good. be still and by myself and to be silent for the purpose of being formed. So whether I like pray, whether I meditate on a scripture in that amount of time, but like something that's really quick and easy. I also think there's huge benefit to an extended amount of time. So whether Mm -hmm. that is a chunk of time in your week that you're like, Hey, on Saturday mornings for an hour, I'm going to get away by myself, however that looks and, and make it happen. Or, I mean, Cody and I have been, dreaming and scheming a little bit about how to get time for each other to have like a full day Mm -hmm. to where it's like, Hey, Mm -hmm. on a Saturday, maybe I leave in the morning and I go even just like hang out in our church atrium, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, like somewhere where I can be by myself and not have to super engage with a bunch of people. Um, and all of those things, whether it's a minute or a day, 
take a lot of intentionality. <laughs> I think that's totally. the that's yes. the discipline part because yes. you have to plan for it and you have to mm-hmm. make arrangements for it. We are almost never naturally in our selves or in our schedules going to be like, yeah, I've just got time that I'm by myself and it's quiet and I'm going to choose to use it for this purpose. And usually our minds are cluttered, right? I mean, we just talked about how at the top of the show that you are wired to think about logistics all day long. You Mm -hmm. know, you're constantly thinking about when bedtime is, what's the next doctor's appointment for my kid and what we're going to eat for dinner. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm constantly thinking about all the work that God's given me to steward everything from the work in my home with my six kids to the work with my husband, because I don't Mm -hmm. want our relationship to fall apart. The work with my team and through the business, the work of writing and speaking. So it's always work, 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 work. Right. So for me, it's really easy to maybe even be on mission and at a hotel room because I'm going to speak the next day. And one of the things I've learned to do is not turn on the TV Mm. and not go answer emails. And sometimes I don't even call you Eve, even though (laughs) you're the first person I'd call to like check in and talk through things, but I don't even call you. I just literally sit there in some silence. And before anyone goes, Oh my gosh, wow. This is like monastic. And we were talking about really being (laughs) really silent. Yes, it might be that, but you know what I do sometimes that's not even about, because I know for me, it could even feel like more doing if I'm like, I need to do my quiet time. Now, absolutely. Yes. Do your quiet time and have time in the word if you haven't been able to find time to meditate on the word of God. But honestly, for me, sometimes silence and solitude really looks like staring out the window and observing Mm. what God has done in creation. Sometimes it means that I get my shoes on and go outside. And instead of playing a podcast in my AirPods, I just like walk And sometimes I talk to the Lord and sometimes I just open my eyes. So I think about like, you know, the hymn, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face Mm. and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. I think I I quoted that right. I think you got it. (laughs) But when you sing that, and we don't always sing that hymn anymore, but when you turn our eyes upon Jesus and look full in his wonderful face, well, that's giving him the attention yeah. That he's due fully. That's yeah, me without saying, distraction. That's me saying I've turned my attention away from this and fully on you. Yeah. And that might mean that I close my mouth and I don't say anything. That might mean that I'm not praying. That might mean that I'm not listening and learning and churning and jotting notes down and thinking mm-hmm. about what I'm going to say in my next Instagram post. No, <laughs> stopping all that and simply saying, who are you, God, and what have you done? And how he's revealed himself sometimes is truly well, not sometimes, always even observable in the very place that he's placed you. You can look up at the sky. You can see how the sun is going down at the end of the day. You can see how the birds are cared for without your help. And so for me, silence and solitude even means, even if I'm traveling and I'm on mission and I'm about to go and serve at a church, it means that I can have a good 30 minutes before I ever get on stage to just have some total silence where I think, yeah. Wow. Who is God and how can I turn my eyes upon him and look and pay attention to him alone? And that means that I have to have something to dwell on either scripture, mm-hmm. or that means that I need to be observing and seeing his creation. And sometimes it just means that I recall his faithfulness in my heart and I can close my eyes and recognize that it's not me, but him that's done yeah. the work. Yeah. Yeah. And just like we saw in Jesus' example, it's the same thing you're describing. That silence and solitude and that intentionality to take that time fuels the mission and work Mm -hmm. that God has called us to, whether that is for you going and speaking to a a crowded room of women or whether for me that means going to have the same conversation with my four-year-old about why we do not hit our brother and sister (laughs) again. Um, That's that's the work that I've been called to and that's the work you've been called to and that that silence and solitude and really turning our full attention to Jesus will fuel us for where we're going next. So Eve, I'm going to pitch it to you first. We always end every episode with um, what's the gospel truth in this topic that we're talking about? Why does it matter? And then what's one small thing we can do in response? So start and tell me what you think is the gospel truth here and why it matters. Yeah, I think 
you know, God's word tells us that we were made for relationship with him. Mm -hmm. And when we practice silence and solitude and really turning our full attention to him, which we're only able to do because of Jesus, right? The provision that God has made through his son and reconciling us to him. When we turn our full attention, we develop that relationship. Like the Mm -hmm. very thing that we were designed for, that our heart longs for on so many levels, this is one way that we get to really engage and lean into the very purpose we were created for. Amen. I think that's perfect. And it makes me think of it wasn't it Augustine that said, and I'm going to butcher this quote. I used to have it perfectly <laughs> memorized, but our hearts will be restless until we yeah. find our rest in him. Yeah. And that's really at the core of the redemption story and the gospel message that we were made to rest in Christ alone. All the resting from the toiling, from the perfection, from the mm-hmm. trying to be holy by ourselves, trying to work our way back to God. Um, we can rest from all that because of Jesus. And because we can rest in the truest sense, we can find rest in our everyday lives by seeking some sol- solitude and some mm-hmm. silence with the one who brings true rest to us. So yeah. it's a good reminder. It's not to be feared. <laughs> yes. Right. Um, okay. So how are you going to start? What's your one small thing to take from this episode? Yeah, this is something I've been actually implementing for a while. So I don't feel like I have an aha moment at the end of this episode. I'm not like, wow, I got to start this right now Um, because I actually have been because I've been traveling quite a bit, Eve, as you know, and there's (laughs) been a lot of alone time and I've been thinking Mm -hmm. I need to make this alone time purposeful rather than make this alone time about catching up on Netflix or catching up on texts. Um, But I would just say my one small thing has been that every time I um, am alone in a new place or while I'm in a season of work. So yes, Mm -hmm. in my everyday life at home, this applies too, but especially when I'm being called to do a lot of work and I'm in like a fruitful season where I'm speaking or I'm writing or I have a lot of meetings or I have to go and like take care of business somewhere Mm -hmm. that I counteract all the fruitfulness with fruitful silence too, that Mm -hmm. I make sure that I am reorienting my heart to the reality that he actually wants my full attention, that my full attention isn't always given to what I can accomplish, whether the people in that room are impressed with what I had to offer, whether I accomplished my goals at a meeting, but that he alone deserves my full attention. So maybe my one small thing is to increase the amount of time I can give to that right now, I would say I am that girl who takes minute retreats easily. Yeah. In fact, I would say I do, um, somewhere around like 30 minutes, 45 minutes really easily. I can definitely settle in to having alone time, um, of being full attention to thinking on God and resting. Um, we talked about on another episode that I'd like to be better about prayer, being prayerful, like to Mm -hmm. actually intentionally using that time to strategically pray, but alone time, actually pretty good at silencing things, silencing my phone to pray, to, to be alone. But I'd like to be, um, my one small thing probably is to turn to that silence and alone time, even when it feels like I have 20 million things waiting on my list and try to increase that amount of time and say, Hey, it's okay to turn to that and set things down for how fruitful it is to have some silence in the moment. Yeah. I love that. What about you? Um, so it's ironic slash providential. Um, even just this week, my husband and I sat down and we're like, we have got to start doing some like regular rhythm things. And Mm -hmm. one of those things Mm -hmm. is that we need to just go for a walk. (laughs) Both of us need to like go for a walk. We've decided on a 15 minute minimum. It could be longer, but it has to be by yourself. Usually it's going to be by ourselves because Mm -hmm. we don't, like just the way we can trade off with kids and responsibilities at home. Um, So I have been listening to an audio book, which is so fun, Mm -hmm. but I think I need to take a silent walk. Like I need to Mm. walk with that intention. If I'm going to build that in as a a habit, um, then I want to attach some like spiritual formation to it. So the discipline of it, it's hard. Yeah. It's so hard not not to get further ahead. Yeah. Just I'm going to, be still. I'm going to take in 
what God is doing in creation and, mm. and be quiet. So I love it so new. much. So friends, can we encourage you to try this discipline, try this habit, try this rhythm in your everyday life, whether it starts with a walk outside without your headphones in or just listening to your surroundings and praying or actually planning a few hours or days to get away and seek God intentionally and giving him your full attention, allowing for him to refuel you and provide vision for your next few months. We encourage you to just be intentional. Do whatever it takes to start with one small thing that will lead you down the path of incorporating this discipline in your everyday life. Thanks so much for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode, we would love for you to send it to a friend or share it on your social media platform just to invite other people into the conversation. Maybe start a new conversation for you with your roommate, your friends, your small group all of those things. If you have a moment and want to leave a quick review for us, that would be helpful too, to help invite other people into the conversation and be able to find us more easily. Thanks so much for joining us. 